Hello, and thanks for uh, joining our ongoing Application Spotlight series. Um, today we're going to be taking a closer look at BitTorrent, which is the runaway king of peer-to-peer -peer file sharing applications out there. Um, and one thing that is a big attention grabber about BitTorrent is about between 27% and 57% of all internet traffic has been estimated to be tied to BitTorrent. Uh, this is from a February 2009 study, so um, this is a, a little bit dated, but still that is a very massive amount of the overall internet traffic out there. And of course, BitTorrent and file sharing in general is about moving large amounts of data around. So even though that number is pretty uh, awe-inspiring, um, again, that's the point of BitTorrent is to be able to move these large files back and forth. Um, when you start looking at uh, where people go to get torrents themselves, there are big torrent kind of hosting and referral sites. Um, so the Pirate Bay was kind of the, one of the more notorious sites. Um, and over the past year, they've uh, kind of regressed a little bit because they uh, were shut down and the owners of the site were actually given uh, jail sentences. So uh, obviously there's a lot of... Uh, uh, serious issues kind of surrounding copyright and, and what happens at all these torrent sites. Um, but that hasn't uh, really stopped these uh, sites from being increasingly popular. In fact, you'll see here, not only do we see that uh, someone can get a version of the Karate Kid, but they're telling you how many seeds there are for the torrent and how many leeches there are for the torrent. Seeds are the things that we have to have in order to make a uh, BitTorrent uh, file transfer work. Um, so if we walk through the life of how BitTorrent works, you'll see that we always need somebody out there that has the full version of the file uh, that we want to share. Um, a tracker is a application um, or server that kind of keeps track of all the various peers out there that have the file and those who are requesting the file. So what happens is when that first user comes in and wants to get that file that the C uh, user has, um, he'll request it from the tracker and the tracker tells him where to go to get it. Of course, that first transfer over, things look pretty normal. It has kind of a standard peer-to-peer uh, -peer file transfer there. Um, where things get interesting is when we have that second user that wants to request the file. So now when he requests the file, um, he can get a part of it from that original seed user and he can get another part of it from the peer that had just received it previously. So now instead of one user in one connection sending all of the file over, we can break it up into more manageable chunks um, and uh, more manageable connections. And of course, this kind of keeps getting better and better as we have more users who are part of the network. We've identified what we meant by seeds. What do we mean by leeches? Leeches are any user uh, out there that may download that whole file, but then not share it with the, the end users, other end users that request the file. So um, if you're wanting a fast download, you want to have lots of seeds, i.e. lots of folks out there that have the full version of the file, and not that many leeches, which are people that are not willing to share it uh, themselves. So that's kind of how uh, BitTorrent works out there in the wild. But what are some of the more uh, kind of enterprise-focused uh, types of uses for BitTorrent? Um, first, we see IT teams out there that use BitTorrent for moving large files like Linux binaries. Um, it's also becoming popular as a great way to distribute um, software patches and updates to end users. We also see BitTorrent becoming popular just as a content delivery technology. Um, as we start having more and more video on websites and things like that. Now, of course, with those um, types of uh, benefits and use cases, there are uh, some pretty serious risks that we need to be uh, cognizant of. What I've done here is moved over to the Application and Threat Research Center on the Palo Alto Networks website. Um, as always, this is something that you can uh, read about various types of applications and, and what their threats are. 
Um, I've typed in BitTorrent and done a quick search here, and you'll notice that BitTorrent pops up as having a very high risk level. It has a risk level of five, which is as high as we go um, in terms of uh, the risk ratings on our applications. So why is that? Um, in short, uh, BitTorrent does pretty much all of the bad things that we look for in terms of kind of bad application behavior. Obviously, it's capable of file transfer since that's its primary function in life. Um, but the big issue, even beyond file transfer, is that it is very extensively used by malware. And the reason for this is that BitTorrent itself has the option to encrypt its, its traffic. And it is a proprietary encryption and uh, traditional firewalls and IPS systems aren't able to crack this encryption and as such aren't able to a, see that it's BitTorrent or what it's carrying. This makes it a great technology for um, network attackers and malware providers because it allows them to do two things. Not only can they get threats and malware into the network through this path, it also makes a great way for them to update the binaries or the executables that run the malware itself. And this allows them to either change the behavior of the malware or even um, change the uh, binary itself so that signatures are not able to recognize the, uh, the threat. So if you think about um, kind of botnets and things like that, these are big distributed networks with lots of endpoints, and BitTorrent really excels at delivering information in big distributed networks. Obviously, um, anything that moves that much information is going to be uh, a concern for our bandwidth. Um, it is highly evasive, meaning that it knows how to get around our traditional firewalls and IPS systems. Uh, it's in wide use, has known vulnerabilities, and, and prone to being misused. So with that in mind, um, we probably need to take a, a pretty serious look at how we control BitTorrent in an enterprise environment. Um, first and foremost, we have to be able to see it, um, regardless of whether it is encrypted or not. Um, the estimates today are that between 25 and 50 percent of all BitTorrent traffic is encrypted. Um, and something that's important here is that the encrypted BitTorrent does not provide any protection or anonymity to the end user. It's all about being able to get across a traditional firewall. So this is something that is not one of those kind of uh, side effects of encryption. This is encryption being used specifically for traversing uh, traditional perimeter security uh, technologies. At Palo Alto Networks, we have application identification and control that not only uses kind of traditional signatures and protocol uh, analysis and things like that, but we also have heuristic analysis so that we can reliably identify BitTorrent even when it is encrypted, and that's really, really key. Um, but once we see it, we also probably want to be able to manage it. So if we have some approved use cases for BitTorrent in the enterprise, now we can look at enabling it only for those, those folks that have a, an approved use case for it. So we can say it's only used for IT, they need to use it to move binaries around. Anyone else that we see using this application, we can deny that access. We can also do something uh, else and say, since it's a potential bandwidth hog, we may want to allow this application, but cap it at a certain level of bandwidth or a certain percentage of the bandwidth on our network. And then, of course, we absolutely want to uh, scan within the traffic to uh, identify and block any of those threats that might be popping up out there in the environment. So this could be uh, looking for botnets. This could be looking for those dangerous URLs. At the very least, if we have uh, employees that are going out and hitting the Pirate Bay or one of those uh, related sites where they're downloading movies, we would be able to see those sites as dangerous URLs and decide to, uh, to block them or allow them based on that. And then, of course, we also need to be cognizant of actually losing data uh, through BitTorrent. Since it can grab such large pieces of, of data, we would 
we want to look at uh, controlling uh, what actually gets out through this uh, this vector BitTorrent. So that's the quick run through of BitTorrent for this uh, week's application spotlight. Um, as always, we would uh, very much uh, like to invite you to the Jumpstart program. This is something that is a 30 minute webinar. It's every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Um, and during this webinar, we will give you a quick introduction to um, the technologies that run inside of uh, Palo Alto Network's Next Generation Firewall, how we actually go about identifying applications and users and content, and then show you a live demonstration of the firewall in action so you get a real feel for what it can do and how it might be able to fit into uh, your enterprise network. So um, you can sign up for that just by hitting the live product demo tab at the top of the Palo Alto Networks website. And we very much look forward to seeing you there or at the next application spotlight. Thanks a lot for the time.